Okay, right, right. Okay, so um, good, good evening, everyone. So um, and good morning, and also good afternoon for friends from different places. So welcome to this um Robo Cup ever uh, invited uh, lecture series, and we are very proud to have um, Jose from Massworth today with us to go to develop robots, AI, and robots and machine learning and stuff uh, with my lab. Okay. And um, I know not just about the lecture, but we also have some um demonstration to show you. So um, I have so hopefully. Uh, we can like have a slow start so that to let everyone uh, can come in to this Zoom session, invited lecture. Right. So while waiting for the rest to enter, so maybe allow me. So first it's like, okay, I introduce myself. So I'm Jeffrey from RoboCup at Home Education as a host today. Uh, and today we invited uh, our, actually a mass work uh, is our, um, uh, for quite some time uh, in our RoboCup at Home Education activities all the time. Uh, online classes um, for the coming uh, education challenge, uh, which is the online challenge. Uh, I hope some of the participants will also appear today to see how we can actually use MATLAB tools or how that is um, uh, hopefully we can bring something uh, interesting and so meaningful for all the audience over here. Uh, right, so as for the time, the way that hopefully all our friends from Asia and also from America and also from Europe able to attend, so look at the time, it's like still um, all of you, um, the slides that um, we run on the screen, so I hope you can see the slide and also if you some will be up on our website as well. So I'll put the link on the website over there. So maybe you can do uh, did your registration. So I, I guess you know the place. So that, uh, we, we replay for the video and also all the related coding example that we open source will be have some link uh, within our uh, basic reminder. I would like to remind all of you that um, this whole session, our um, social media website and also our Facebook group and so on. So uh, please be careful on your privacy. I have like one, two minutes to introduce briefly about RoboCup at Home Education. So RoboCup at Home Education is an educational initiative in RoboCup to boost uh, our participation. And uh, specifically is for this artificial intelligence, which is AI or robotics, but also we focus on um, AI, artificial intelligence. So under, currently under this initiative, we have these um, four main efforts that we are running. This year due to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we, we have to like follow RoboCup that we, we actually we share an event to next year, but uh, replace with uh, the physical event, we actually have the online challenge. So if you, first time for you to hear, head to our website to see more information about the ongoing um, education challenge that we are running currently. Okay, so it's more uh, participation and you are welcome to submit uh, your creation or your development for this uh, online challenge. So our website now there, so you can, you can head on after this session for more information. Right, the second thing is like over here we promote, um, over there we invited um, our technical partner Masswork to show you practically how to actually implement um, everything, all the things that you, you, you develop, right? So whether it's, a, it's, a, it's a automation later on, um, our developer speaker will show you some of our example and code are open source. So then the third initiative or the third effort in our initiative is this whole uh, workshops face-to-face -face with our members and also run this course. So everything that you see after, uh, but due to this, so I think now, so um, later on, I'll introduce to you like, so we put all our courseware and also the app classes, right? So I will, I will introduce you more about this online classes. More robotics and AI learning uh, uh, without the various so that um, normal people, general public, people without any um, technical background able to follow us this free call laptops and, and software. And also over here, I would like to say thanks again to MassWorks that um, all our teams that participate in our activities, in our competition. So MassWorks as a global sponsor uh, uh, for us to use. So for you that you want to start your uh, development with MATLAB and also or MASWORK tools, uh, similar and so on, please um, apply for the complementary uh, software. Okay, then lastly is this outreach program. So also over here that if uh, for any of the community uh, that interested to know more, to want to know more and also to get more, and we would like to outreach this or help us to host our event and activities locally in the place for your community as well. Right, so for more information, please go to our website. You can see all uh, the details that I just said and also uh, if you want to like that, then uh, in our Facebook page, um, you can join our group. So we have this RoboCup at Home Facebook group that you can join. Then once you are a member, okay, so that is our uh, short introduction about RoboCup at Home. And thanks to all the partners and also sponsors down there that support our online um, classroom. So we have uh, conducted several, uh, I started this track, I think as early once the pandemic, um, we try to move everything to online so that we can continue to, to introduce and also to promote educational uh, effort in, in at-home development. Okay, so if you're interested, you can use of the previous class and also the materials over there. And um, and this time, so after we finish our uh, online classroom, which is we involve different kind of hardware, open source hardware and also standard platform, then now we are focused on this invited lecture series, which is uh, we have um, representative, um, our engineer from uh, MassWorks as a start to introduce you our uh, invite 
these um, activities. So for more details, please head to the uh, website that I put the link over there. Okay, so now let's, um, that, that is all about the introduction for RoboCup. I will say even Dano, I hope I uh, pronounced correctly. So it's a robotics engineer from MassWorks specialized in the area of robotics education and student competition simulation of robot manipulators, projects on autonomous system for deployment on zero gravity applications and robust estimation and um, a, a very brief uh, introduction. So I will pass the time um, to Jose and maybe he can continue to tell us more about him and uh, can start Sounds the good. presentation. Yeah, thanks Jeffrey. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me well, uh, and uh, I'm what's called a MathWorks Technical Evangelist for the Robotics area. So uh, basically, uh, we sponsor many student competitions, just like RoboCup, and uh, as part of that, we try to, you know, uh, promote the education of, of robotics, and we create demos and content that are going to help students worldwide, you know, just kind of get started with robotics. So that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to give you a brief overview of, of MATLAB, of what it can do, of its potential, of how you guys can get access to it. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen and get started. Okay, perfect. Okay. So here's what we're going to cover today. And um, throughout the, the webinar, please feel free, or the lecture, feel free to put all the questions in the chat. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to go through most of the content that we have for you guys today. And then at the end, we're going to be here answering questions, um, trying to help you guys out with any questions you guys can have about MATLAB, about robotics, about anything that we, you think we can help you with. Um, what we're going to cover today is first, we're going to tell you what MATLAB is. Um, so we're going to give you a brief introduction to MATLAB, what it looks like, what it can do, what it's mostly used for. Then we're going to talk about ROS and, and since most of the robotics that's based in RoboCup uses a lot of ROS and RoboCup at home, uh, education itself is gonna have a lot of ROS content. We're gonna talk about that ROS MATLAB connectivity and how you can use that in order to take advantage of our tools to program your robots. Then we're gonna show you something pretty interesting that is uh, how to use flowcharts to program your robots. Uh, so just a bit of more visual way for you to keep track of all your algorithms as your behavior of your robot and your logic starts becoming more complex. So it's, a, it's just a better way to organize all your logic, your robot logic, in order to be able to keep track uh, of what the ro robot's doing, of the decisions that it's making and things like that. Then we're gonna talk about simulations. Uh, we're gonna explain sort of why simulations are so important and, and show you guys some tools uh, that will help you get started or in the right direction of creating your own simulations and using MATLAB for, and simulating for simulations. And then we wanted to talk about uh, a little bit about practical deep learning. So uh, deep learning, of course, is a massive subject and we won't be able to you know, give you a complete you know, understanding of it in a couple of minutes, but we're gonna wanna equip you guys with a couple of techniques and a couple of processes that you can use to leverage the power of deep learning very quickly in just a couple of minutes. And we're gonna show you how to do that in MATLAB, which is really easy. And finally, we will show you a couple more interesting topics of discussion and things that you can do in the products uh, that you will, might be interested in for your competition and your challenge, uh, or even in the future for more robotics projects. So let's start by talking about MATLAB. So MATLAB, um, is what we call a technical computing environment. And it's basically you know, a computer program um, and, a, and a programming language in which uh, you can do a lot of data analysis, you can program your own algorithms, uh, but we're really strong because we provide a really well uh, established and tested library uh, of, of, of features. And a lot of these features are geared towards numeric computation, data analytics um, and algorithm development, but a lot of it is also based on specific industry areas, such as signal processing, image processing, um, statistics, optimization, symbolic math. And within these will be also robotics, control systems, autonomous systems, um, aerospace and automotive industry. So all of the products are gonna have a rich amount of features that we've sort of coded for you tested and provided all the documentation so that it will save engineers and scientists time. So that's a brief introduction about MATLAB. And here are a couple of cool things that you can do with it, just to sort of lay out the foundation for the rest of the presentation. 
so data analysis and robotics are big. Um, but uh, computer vision, control design, deep learning, you can see in here, for instance, object detection, how to detect an object um, that's a, a given color. Uh, maybe you're going to use that in one of your autonomous algorithms. So we make it really easy by providing things like applications in which you can interactively select the color that, that you're looking for. In this case, we're trying to identify a green color. Uh, when it comes to ground robots or ground robotics, robots that are moving around in some sort of map, um, we also provide algorithms that are going to help you create the maps, uh, track the position of your robot within those maps, create the trajectory. So, so all of these things that are very specific to a particular application uh, are likely going to be features within the products. So just like any other software library, uh, basically you're going to find all the things there. Um, and then things like manipulators and humanoids are very specific to robotics. We have rich libraries for those as well. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to start putting those in the chat and at the end we'll talk about you know, what MATLAB can do, what are some examples that we already have that you can leverage. And finally, a lot of image processing and computer vision. So on the right, you can see how we have an algorithm that's detecting the faces of people and then cat categorizing categorizing them as male or female. So we're going to take a look into that too. Uh, just sort of give you guys a teaser of, of how easy it is to do these things in MATLAB, sort of the mystified the, the concept that, um, you know, computer vision or, or, or detection of, of things can be hard or can be a lengthy process and instead show you guys how you can do it in a couple of quick, easy steps of program. But first we're gonna start by talking about ROS. So a lot of Robocop at home uh, is gonna be based on, on the ROS operating system. And, and this is because um, ROS has become very mainstream and has equipped many robots. And it gives a great platform for distributed systems and a great operating system uh, that already has a, a lot of features that are included uh, for robot specific things such as mapping and computer vision. So. The idea here is to show you guys how you can leverage ROS and MATLAB at the same time. And uh, where MATLAB comes in is um, basically if you have a robot that's equipped uh, with ROS, in this case, it can be a simulator or it can be your actual hardware. For instance, today we have a turtle bot here which has ROS running on it. Uh, and then MATLAB will be able to interact directly with it. Uh, so you'll be able to create your algorithms and then pull in ROS data from like sensors and measurements and estimators, and then you're gonna be able to set ROS actions and, 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 and publish commands as well. All of that from MATLAB. Uh, that way you can interact with your robot through our ecosystem. And then finally, um, that's for quick prototyping, what we call desktop prototyping. You're gonna be able to generate code and deploy this as ROS nodes. So to make everything standalone, you, we have automated the process for you. So basically you're gonna be able to prototype really quickly without having to compile any code, just doing it all on your desktop and trying your commands and algorithms over there. And then once you're ready to sort of finalize your project, say, okay, it's time for my project to be standalone, to not require to be tethered to another computer, you can generate a ROS node and then put it in your application, in this case, your robot, and then it will run by itself. So we're gonna be giving you an overview of all these things. Here's a, just a little nitpick of, um, the raw support that we have. So you'll see that we support a lot of different functionality in raw. So, um, so we start with the network connections and exploration. So things like your basic ROS topics, how to subscribe to them, how to publish. Um, that those are all things that are gonna be included. There are gonna be simple commands in MATLAB that you can use just like in any other operating um, programming language. Then we have the services and actions that you're gonna be able to also subscribe or create. Um, you're gonna be able to set uh, these actions and things like that. Uh, if you have specialized messages, so if you've ever worked with ROS before, um, or if you haven't, there's this thing called custom messages that you can create. And it's basically your, your own way of customizing this ecosystem or this operating system to have the information organized the way you want it or, or, or the way somebody else has already intended for it. So you can support all of those custom messages and customize your experience from there. And then finally, ROS log files or ROS bags, which is what they're called. We have functionality to import those into MATLAB. And since MATLAB, MATLAB is really great at data processing and data analytics, you're gonna be able to quickly analyze that 
data, create plots, uh, come up with uh, useful conclusions from your data, um, filter it, um, uh, clean it up, and, and then also even use it for simulations. So this is just sort of a quick overview of all the functionality that's intended there. Uh, so now we're gonna go into um, a demo. So we'll try to run this live, we'll see how it goes. Um, we want to show you um, the interaction with Ross in order to do speech synthesis. So uh, we have, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera, but before I do that, we're going to show you that we have here with me a little TurtleBot robot. So I'm going to get my microphone real close. I'm going to stop sharing my video. And we're going to try to run the demo in MATLAB. So here we have MATLAB. And we're gonna test this script that we have here. And basically what it's doing is connecting to the robot via ROS, and then we're creating a, a speech client. So we're creating a ROS action client using the sound play functionality in ROS. And we're trying to get this robot here to say uh, this piece of text right here. So we're trying to get it to just execute this final command here that says uh, saying text from MATLAB. And by doing that, we're gonna be sending a goal to the robot. So we're setting a goal that's gonna be, please say this text, and we're interacting directly with MATLAB. So let's see if we can get the robot to say that. Okay, so hopefully you guys could hear that. So if you couldn't, please let me know. Um, Let's take a look at the chat um, real quick. So we'll try that one more time. So we'll show you guys that in here, in the command window in MATLAB, it tells me, okay, we've have a goal active, we've sent a goal to our action server. And then uh, we see that the final state is that it succeeded and that it took it, it had a stamp of three seconds. So that's great. We'll go ahead and do it one more time. Um, so as you can see here, it's very simple. As long as all your ROS environment is set up, which most of the time it will be dependent on your robot, you can use this ROS action clients or just functions in MATLAB to create, um, to, to, to interact with your robot directly. So in case that you guys missed that the first time, we'll just go ahead and run that real quick. And there it is. And once again, we've been able to set, you know, one of the commands for the robot to follow just using MATLAB. And this is the ecosystem. This is what MATLAB looks like in general. You can create the scripts. You can see that it's a scripting language. It's not quite, a, it's not a programming language, which is gonna save you a lot of time. Um, so you don't have to declare your variables. You don't have to keep track of all these uh, syntax, but instead you just kind of naturally write the code as you think of it. So that was that was our first demo. So now we're gonna move back to our presentation. And we're gonna talk a little bit about flowcharts. And flowcharts are important because um, these are essentially, it was one of the tools that we have in order to demonstrate the logic that we're thinking of. So before we program some logic into the robot, we have to come up with sort of the sequence of commands and things that we wanted to do before we can write it in code. So uh, flowcharts are, are really good for this. So these are a couple of the options that you currently have. And not only in MATLAB, but in, in basically any way you're programming your robots. First you'll start, your basic option will be to use your if else statements or if else type of statements, logical conditioning, uh, in which you just, depending on some conditions, you're gonna take a set of actions. And that works great, but 
as these start getting bigger and they start interacting with each other, they will get really complicated. Uh, and it might be difficult to keep track of it. Uh, so for prototyping and texting, testing of com complex robot logic, uh, other methods can be you know, more easily understand and shared, especially if you're working with a group of, of students or a group of engineers, that you all have to be understanding the code that's going into the room. So visuals become really important. You can see in Simulink, this is something that we will show later, uh, but block diagrams can be useful for this. So block diagrams just give you a, a sequence uh, um, that the data is flowing through. So this makes it visual. That way you can understand exactly what are the things that are affecting, in this case, your final signal or your final output. And then state flow on the right is, is sort of a tool that allows you to draw uh, visually you know, appealing charts um, that allows you to create these flow charts and diagrams that is going to have all of the connection lines going into the different, in this case, states that your robot can have. So when we talk about states, we're talking about what are the tasks that the robot has to perform. And this is going to be useful because with traditional programming, it can be a little difficult to program asynchronous or parallel processes since you have to jump around between different portions of code. Um, it's, it's not very easy to understand, but in something like a visual tool, you'll be able to create you know, parallel states that you can visually identify as running at the same time. And then within those include all the different interactions that you're gonna to wanna to program your robot. So in this case, we wanna give you a quick example of, of um, sort of sequential programming approach that we did for like a VAX robot. So in the video here, you'll see that we're debugging this robot and we just wanted to go pick up that cone and bring it back to us. So it's sort of like a fetching problem. Uh, just using that reckoning, can you please go pick up that cone, bring it back, drop it at this point right here. Um, so we've used state flow and you can see in the bottom that we created all these different states for the things that the robot's supposed to be doing to complete the task. So in this case, it corresponds to move forward, then once you've reached the object, grab the object, then lift it up off the ground, then turn around, start moving backwards, and finally, when it gets to the position where it has to drop it off, drop the object. And we've included in the states things like, you know, okay, what are the wheel speeds that we need in order to complete that action? Or what is the position of the arm in order to lift up the object or put it back down? So we'll just run it real quick one more time. So you'll see in the bottom in the chart that some of the states are being highlighted. And then at the end, it gets to the drop object state and, and that's where sort of the algorithm finalizes. So this is one I wanted to show you with regards to state flow. It just makes things a little bit easier to understand. And even if it's not a sequential process, we're gonna give you an example right now of something that's a bit more asynchronous and has a little bit more going on for it. So we're gonna show you how to parse the voice command. So we just saw how like a robot can, you know, generate whichever voice um, or, 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 or say whatever you want to say. Uh, so now we're gonna show you, okay, what happens if you want to actually get the robot to understand something we're saying. And for that, we're also using Russell. Let's take a look at that demo. So I'm just gonna navigate here to my chart. Um, we're gonna open up this speech chart that we've created. And all of these files that we're showing you today are gonna be available. So if you guys wanna explore any of this, um, we've already have um, videos on this on the RoboCop at Home Education website. So feel free to, to try those out and go check out all the things that are available. So here you see that we created a bit more of an involved chart in which we're, we're starting our ROS interfaces and we're basically organizing this, all of this in our chart. And then we have a robot listening. Um, so we're listening and we're gathering a string based on what it's listening to. And depending on what it, what it has listened or what it understands, we're gonna take this different command. So 
you say hello to the robot, it's just going to say hello back. So that's our greet state. Uh, so it's just basically talking back to you, saying, oh, hi there. And then we have a sort of a main task. So the purpose of this robot is um, to sort of grab something from a place. And in this case, the place can be split up into three different sort of rooms or locations. So it can be the kitchen, the bedroom, or the living room. And then finally, you'll see that in here in the main task, we double click on that, we can see the full extent of what it's doing in the main task. So it will ask, okay, which object should I be looking for? And, and in this particular algorithm, it was telling it, okay, you can sort of find this, any of these three objects, water, milk, or a glass. And then uh, it will talk back to you, give you some feedback saying, okay, I'm getting this object. And uh, then tell you, okay, here it is. You can have it now, uh, enjoy. And then finally, if we tell the robot to stop, we'll go into a final state here called stop, um, in which it, the algorithm will just terminate. So we're going to take a look at how this runs. So for this, we're going to go ahead and go to our uh, run speed chart. So I believe the robot had just started, so it's now listening to me. So let's see if we can get it to say hi back to me. Hello. So let's give it a minute. So it looks like, hello. Hello. Oh, hi there. And there it is. So he's saying hi back to us. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm actually going to close this real quick. Um, we're going to clear everything before we run it again. I'm going to open up this chart. And now we're going to tell it to try and get something from the kitchen. So we're going to say, get to the kitchen. Oh, there. So it just listened to me saying that word. So um, now we're going to try to reach which object should I look for. Get the milk. Get the milk. Grab me some water. Water. Okay, I will get the water. There is no water. Enjoy. Thank you. Stop. Okay, and there we have it. So um, we were able to go through all of the state flow chart and see it live and see the things that we're executing all the way from it starting at the listen state, um, going sort of through saying hello, going through a main task, finding an object, and finally stopping. Uh, so as you can see, the robot doesn't always obey my commands, but sometimes it understands what I'm saying, and, and, and that's part of the algorithm. And this gives us an, an idea of how it is to debug these things and how we can see where our algorithm is going. And most importantly, if you were to share this chart with somebody else, they can easily put all of this together and read it and say, oh, okay, I, I can see exactly what this robot's doing. Whereas if you were to give them uh, you know, a, a, a piece of code that has you know, 50 different if else statements, it might take them a while in order to read through it and understand everything that is happening there. Okay, so now that we've gone through that demo, We're going to go ahead and go back to our presentation. 
I'm going to talk a little bit about Simulink. Um, so why is Simulink important? So just like we just show you with the flow charts, uh, sometimes uh, creating things that are visual to explain a real world problem or, or, or sort of an engineering approach makes a lot of sense and can make it easier, not only for others to understand what you are doing, but for you yourself to keep track of the things that you're modeling. So once we move a little bit away from sort of robot programming or the logic programming to more of like robot modeling and robot design approach, uh, we're going to need an environment that's going to be able to scale with what we're trying to do. So simulating robots is very important. And for that, you'll, you'll need a platform that can support a lot of different things. So that's where Simulink comes in. It's our product that supports design automation. So in this case, we call it model-based design. And it's the idea that you can take a model, in this case, a block diagram, and use it throughout your development process. Um, in this case, you can create your simulation with this with this block diagram, but you can also create your algorithm and put it in there, uh, even if it's MATLAB, if it's code, if it's chart, whatever it is. You can include it in there and test it all in the loop at the same time. And you can also create charts and plots so you can see here, for instance, uh, in here that we've created um, a model and we've created some data from it. So we've created a scope that's showing us uh, maybe some throttle position versus some movement of a car. We've all, we're also using a state flow chart. So we're leveraging different tools here to create a complete simulation. This state flow chart in this case is uh, the shifting of a manual transmission in a car. Uh, and then the same thing stands true for all the simulation products. So, uh, they're going to have a lot of features for control systems, signal processing, uh, robotics that are going to help you out. But we'll just talk a little bit at first about why simulations are important. So you're not always going to have access to a robot, especially as we found out. Uh, sometimes you just don't have the hardware with you, or sometimes you're going to find out that the hardware is pretty expensive for you to be trying out you know, relatively risky algorithms on it. So simulation gives you a chance to try it out in sort of like a virtual environment or a, or a more safe environment that is not going to uh, break anything. And the worst thing that will happen is that your simulation won't run. And it also allows you to optimize and run simulations really fast. So um, you can run simulations probably faster than you can wait for the robot to complete a task in real life. It also saves you the hassle of you know charging batteries, setting up. Uh, a, work, a test bench and all of these things. So normally simulations are useful for you to run a simulation, process the results, and then analyze them all in one thing. And maybe you will keep iterating through that process, change some values, adjust some parameters, try everything again. But also most importantly, if you do it all within a computer, within a simulation ecosystem, you get a really good chance at optimization of your parameters. So because you can run not uh, five tests a day, but maybe you can run, you know, a hundred different tests in an hour or even a hundred different tests in 10 minutes. Um, you, can, you can run thousands of tests and just find out which are the more optimal parameters. So which will lead to the lower cost of operation of maybe a robot in this case, which is what we're showing you here on the right. Is this a trajectory of a manipulator or a robot that's trying to grab something and put it somewhere else. And we're basically calculating the cost of operation based on the electricity that is going to be using on the work that it's doing by picking up that object and moving it to a different trajectory. So this is the type of thing that a, a well-crafted simulation is going to help you optimize. And uh, since we've shown you a lot of ROS functionality, uh, it's only important to, to show you that all of these ROS functionality is supported within this block diagram ecosystem. Um, so just like we did with the stateful chart where we were interacting via ROS commands, publishers and actions and things like that, uh, all of these things are going to be available as blocks in the Simulink ecosystem. So for instance, if I want to get the pose from the robot and I want to leverage um, one of the functions that we have to convert sort of those coordinates and rotations of the robot, into something that's called the homogeneous transform. That's very commonly used in robotics in order to identify the, the location and the orientation of a robot or, or a coordinate frame. Uh, you can see how in here we've, we've sort of split that up in a block diagram, got the information from the respective topic, and then uh, 
extracted the portions of it that we're interested in and then use a pre-built block um, instead of having to you know write our own code to transform this just use you know a library block in there we can even include the visualization straight so you can see that we've we've had sort of like a display here for all the numerical values so it, it can be a very useful tool when you're trying to, um, to sort of iterate your design and prototype quickly instead of you know having to write code something that will require you to maybe write an extra script just to display through your terminal window all of these different values you can just sort of hit the run button in a simulation or in a simulate model and it will you know create all the interface for you you can see what's running you can click on the signals and see what are the values and you can create displays and things like that that are just going to make you uh, a lot faster at understanding what's going on in your hardware So uh, one of the advantages of, of, of all of this is that uh, you might think, okay, well, maybe, yeah, that sounds great, but what if I just want it to be standalone? I, I don't really want it to, to have my desktop connected to it uh, for me to be able to you know, get my robot to do things. So that's, that's a great question. And actually that's something that we think about every day. So that's why everything that you do in MATLAB, Simulink, Stateful, any of the MATLAB products, you're going to be able to generate standalone C and C++ code from it. So this code you're going to be able to put in any device that you want. In this case, uh, the most interesting one might be ROS. So we've talked about generating a ROS node. So you can compile and generate a ROS node and then put it in your robot and have it execute there. And that will stand true for either if you're using the programmatic approach from MATLAB, the block diagrams of Simulink or over it, the flow charts. So all of that will be true, but also if you're using something more like low cost hardware, like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, that's also going to be true. In fact, it might be even easier since we have sort of special links to common platforms that are called hardware support packages. Um, and we also have something very interesting that's called GPU acceleration. So you can generate code specifically for, for graphics processors and GPUs. And then your code, uh, especially for deep learning algorithms and you know very computationally intensive algorithms, uh, this means that it's going to run way quicker if you deploy it to something with a lot more computational power. And you can do that as well pretty easily from uh, going from a flowchart to okay, I just want to deploy this to a GPU. So instead of having to learn, okay, how do I go about CUDA programming? Do I have to take you know a couple of weeks course just to understand how to program a GPU or can I just kind of hit a button and, and have all my algorithm run faster? Um, so those are some of the advantages that you're going to be able to look at. And then finally, we get to the portion of the lecture regarding deep learning. Uh, so there's a couple of things we talked about. OK, some practical deep learning things that we can show you. So uh, a lot of our products are geared toward designing, training, and analyzing uh, deep neural networks. And if you're not familiar yet, the um, neural networks in general are very useful for things where you have to perform object detection or, or object, object classification. And in general, they're really good at processing images and extracting information and data from them. Uh, but that they're not limited to images, of course. You can use the neural network approach for other things like processing text or processing time data. Uh, but we're going to show you a couple of demos using images today. Uh, for instance, you can see in the lab that we've classified these four images. Um, that, that These are some of our giveaways, the things that we don't normally give out when we go to events. Uh, so there is a MathWorks screwdriver that it's correctly identified. Uh, and this is all the computer and using a trained neural network to analyze the image, sort of get all of the different colored pixels from their extract features and then decide what it thinks it is. So on the right, you can see that um, we have tools like the Network Designer app. Uh, so if you're not familiar with sort of neural networks, uh, they work based on a bunch of different layers um, that are gonna basically have some behavior in extracting uh, sort of data from the information, in this case, the pixels of an image. And you can adjust those layers. Um, that's going to require uh, some previous knowledge of what each layer does and how you want to arrange them and what's a good order for them. But we provide tools for you to like create these layers and arrange them in, 
in, in intelligent, smart ways and visualizing exactly what is the depth uh, of, of your neural network. So that's pretty interesting. But we also provide tools for training and understanding how your training is going. So generally when you have a neural network, what you do is uh, you will give it hundreds, maybe thousands of images and let it, you know, predict what are the things in those images. So normally that data will be labeled. Uh, so you will you will give it some specification of what it's looking at. And then it will go through a training process of understanding the, the things that are contained in those images. Uh, so we give a lot of interactive tools that are gonna help you understand whether the neural network that you've designed is basically being trained in the right direction. So it's actually learning the things that you wanted to learn or whether it's actually very confused and, and not understanding the things that, that you're showing. But right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a little bit about model import and export into MATLAB. And this is, this is important. Um, uh, this is important because uh, creating a neural network from scratch requires a lot of knowledge. So it does require that you understand all the concepts of, of what is a neural network, called the math behind it, uh, how do these layers interact with each other and what each of those layers do, uh, and what are the effects of, of sort of your architecture and the training and things like that. So those are things that most people won't be familiar with. However, there are tons of pre-trained net, pre networks out there. AlexNet, Google, Google Net, RASNet, and so many more that people have already trained uh, that work great under specific circumstances. For instance, um, AlexNet is trained in you know thousands of objects of different objects. So if you if you show it something that's common, like you know maybe a coffee cup, it's going to be able to identify it as a coffee cup or a coffee mug, or or it's going to be able to give you a very a, a, a very accurate inference of what it's seeing. So let's let's continue with that. Um, so you can leverage this. So you can use this straight out of the box, basically without much understanding of what, how a neural network is created. And that's what we wanna talk about today. Even if you are not an expert in deep learning or neural networks or machine learning, you can download these sort of modules and use them within your projects in order to identify different things. And a more technical aspect of it is, um, if you are familiar with some deep learning, there are some specific interchange formats uh, that are used in order to sort of share these uh, uh, these neural network models or, and the parameters within this neural network. So these are called Onyx or um, TensorFlow Cafe, and all of these can be imported into MATLAB. And once you're in MATLAB, you can sort of make all the necessary changes there. So we're gonna give you a couple of demos of things that we've done using pre-trained neural network right now. And they're all processing images, so we'll try that live. We'll try, we'll try to show that to you guys and, and show you that it's not that difficult. So let's get back to MATLAB here. Um, and you'll see that in here we've, we've loaded, um, basically what I'm doing in the first part of this script is I'm just selecting the device I wanna interact with. So we wanted to show you guys that obviously you can get your images and things from ROS. So these are all files that you're gonna have access to. Uh, but in this case, I'm using my webcam and, and loading a, a gender net neural network. Uh, so it's as easy as uh, loading previously imported network into MATLAB. Um, then we're, we're basically setting the class names of the different things. So the class names in this case are gonna be the things that we can detect. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be basically the, the genders or just uh, the faces and the genders. And then finally, it's as simple as uh, we do some processing, uh, but finally you just use this predict command. Uh, so you use this predict command and then you give it an image uh, and it will give you a score um, based on, on what it's detecting. And then what, all we're doing is we're displaying that within, within a video player that we've created in MATLAB. So we're basically importing, importing this neural network, uh, grabbing images from a webcam, 
which is what we're doing up here. And then we're putting it all in a for loop um, where, where we're trying to predict the gender based on the image. So essentially we're just uh, running this function predict on an image. You can also do it outside of a for loop and it's gonna give you a score of what it's detecting. So if we run this real quick, you're gonna see me here with the turtle bar. And right now it's not detecting my face really well because I'm sort of facing the wrong direction. But uh, hopefully if I turn around and look at the camera, so right now we're getting some detection there. So first it's detecting my face. And second of all, we can see that it has an M next to it. And it actually says 0 0.99. So that's sort of the confidence or the score that the neural network has assigned to the detection. So it's basically 99% sure that I'm a male. So that's great. Um, so that quickly you can download, you'll see portions of code like that. I wanna go ahead and close this, terminate that. But after that, you can just use that in your algorithm. So there was no need for anybody to sort of be a deep learning expert, but instead just to know a little bit of MATLAB programming. Uh, which we have great tutorials to sort of get you ramped up and started within, uh, you know, an hour or two hours or so. Uh, and it's it's really very, very, very intuitive uh, how to run all of these commands. And then you'll see that you have a running deep learning uh, algorithm that is using a deep learning network to identify a face and to identify the gender of a person. And this is just an example for gender. We also want to show you guys um, uh, basically, we want to show you how you can detect the emotion um, of people. So if we go back here, so we have a phase age emotion detector. And we're going to try to run this algorithm. And, and this algorithm is very similar. Let me just clear my MATLAB commands and clear my camera. Okay, so now you've seen me here full screen. Uh, you can see that I'm not looking at the camera yet, but if I look at the camera, it's a little frozen, but give it a moment. Okay, so now it can see me, it started processing my face and it says that I am 31 years old and that I have a neutral face. <laughs> I'm not sure what neutral means, but let's try something else. Maybe we can try to see if I smile. It now says I'm happy, that's great. Maybe if I frown. change from neutral, no, it just makes me a little older. So you can see that these things are not perfect, but it will oscillate and maybe it will show you angry, it will show you fear. Um, but these are all things that somebody else has taken the time of programming. So let me just close this out. So you can see uh, we just, um, and if we open up this function, uh, you'll see that what we're doing here is it's wrapped in sort of a bunch of protective layers, but we're loading up the image from a webcam. And then we are loading a, a deep neural network called um, here. Uh, so we're just creating this detector object um, that's gonna be able to detect the gender, age, emotion, uh, and then finally, we're also wrapping it in a for loop that says detect, um, that is, is gonna use that detector and snapshot from the webcam in order to give us some sort of information. So in this case, a bounding box and an image out. Um, and we're gonna be able to, to use that um, to sort of, sort of like process that data on our own. And uh, the, the way we did this is you basically just download this pre-trained models uh, from from one of the of the locations. In this case, if you go to MATLAB uh, Central or MATLAB File Exchange, 
you will find tons of different pre-trained neural networks that people have taken the time of designing and training using different images that you can reuse. And then I think the final thing that we wanted to show you guys is um, this is AlexNet. So it's, 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 it's a neural network uh, that is trained on many different objects. And what we've done is we've taken a subset of those objects and we're also doing the same thing. So if you look here at our code, uh, we're basically just using the same predict function on, a, on, a, on an imported neural network. And we're trying to predict um, what, what the objects are in the picture. And there's a, the class predictions are gonna be the different type of things that it can detect. So we're gonna go ahead and run that real quick. So now we'll see that you can see me on screen again, and you can see that it says, okay, football helmet. So it's identifying something as a football helmet. And I don't really know what that is, but maybe it thinks that my headphones look sort of like a football helmet. And the reason for that is we sort of grab a neural network that could identify a bunch of different things, and we tell it, okay, just tell me if it's one of these five things or the six things. And a couple of those are a football helmet, a water bottle. So if I try and show you this bottle that I have right here, um, can see that the percentage of accuracy goes up. So now we're talking about 80%, 90% instead of the previous like 45%. So it really thinks that this is a water bottle now, which is a lot more accurate since at least it's a bottle. Uh, let's say if we try and show it like my coffee mug, um, it still thinks it's a bottle, but okay, now it thinks it's a coffee mug. So ping pong ball, coffee mug. So mostly coffee mug. So it can identify these objects. And these are based on, on, on things that other people have pre-programmed into these neural networks. So that's a brief piece around that. And all we wanted to do to end was to tell you, okay, well, you know, these capabilities are available here. MATLAB makes it really easy so that you can just import this, a couple of commands, and then use the sort of detect commands or predict commands and, and get information straight from images without you having to go through the trouble of learning all that is necessary for a deep neural net. Um, other options, if you're more advanced, if you're watching this webinar and you sort of already know deep learning, you know how these things are created, uh, you can also do things called transfer learning. So you can retrain this network. So if let's say that for the RoboCup specific challenge, you have pictures of the objects that you're trying to find. So you can uh, find our examples on how you grab a network that's pre-trained that may be can already detect uh, those objects with some low accuracy uh, and then improve the way that it detects them by retraining it with new images. And you also can modify the network layouts and uh, create networks from scratch, which I don't currently recommend unless you're, you, you know, you, you've studied deep learning extensively. And then finally, a couple more topics that I wanted to touch on uh, on this lecture was robot modeling. So basically in robotics, there's sort of two main areas of approach that, that that's important to master. Uh, one of them is robot programming, which is sort of creating the logic and decision making and all of these things. But if you wanna if you wanna create your own robot instead of interact with an existing robot, then that's called you know robot design. So for robot design, being able to model these robots before you create them is very important. So um, there, there are tools for either one. So we showed you right now a lot of useful tools for robot programmers. There's also a lot of useful tools for robot designers. In this case, it comes to like modeling the electronics of a robot or the mechanical properties. Um, how heavy are the components? Um, how can you find the appropriate motors for your, for your robot? Uh, what speeds can you achieve based on the different components that you have selected? And this is where a lot of our tools come in where you can sort of simulate all of these different fidelities so, or circumstances, whether, for instance, you want to emulate the torque of a motor or you actually go, want to go as detailed as we've showed here as uh, modeling the electrical interactions between the components that are driving that motor. So these are all very important things to take into account when you're designing robots. 
And also you can import from CAD. So let's say that you're creating your, the mechanical portion of your robot. Uh, you want to you wanna simulate now the things that you've designed to see you know, with a specific motor, how fast it can move and things like that. You can import your CAD models. Um, or if you're working with an existing robot, you can import your RDF files um, so you can create your simulations. This brings us back to simulating. Simulating is very important. So whenever you get a chance, try to simulate your algorithms before deploying them. It's going to save you a lot of development time. And another topic that we didn't quite touch on today, but it's available in all of our files and documents is planning and navigation. So uh, there's a lot of different resources for this. So there's things like probabilistic path planning uh, and, and motion planning and navigation is basically understanding the environment you're at and how to move through it. So there's gonna be a lot of different tools for this. Um, just to sort of conclude a little bit this webinar, uh, my big final takeaway is our products are available to you. Uh, try to get a hold of a MATLAB license, explore all the different things. If you're wondering whether MATLAB has libraries or support for something, go to our MATLAB documentation. We put a lot of effort into this. And basically everything that's in the product or that, or that other people in the community has created, you're gonna be able to find through this one sort of search bar. You can always use Google as well, but if you go to our Mat MATLAB doc, you'll find all of the things that are MATLAB relevant. For instance, uh, you'll see in here that in this documentation page, I just search for phase detection and immediately I get a bunch of great community contributions, documentation on, on for instance, how to detect and track a phase using a KLT algorithm, um, how to do a phase detection system. And this is all work that you can take advantage of. We have a big community um, as part of the student competitions team. We're always trying to help out uh, students participating in robotics competitions. So feel free to interact with us. We're here to help you. Um, you can go watch all of our video tutorials, which I recommend. They're all available at Robotics Arena, mathworks.com slash robotics arena, and also on YouTube. Uh, you can send us an email with questions on this webinar. We'll try to answer a couple of questions right now but you can always email us back with something new that you come up with that you're trying to find out if you can use MATLAB for. We also have a Facebook group where you can go ask questions. So it's more of a forum. And we post updates on the things that we're working on and, and things that are interesting. And we, we've also created a GitHub page where we post a lot of our demos and things that are related to robotics. And with that accompanying awesome MATLAB robotics repository that will give you a great directory and index of cool things that project that will get you started using that. So that's all that I have for you guys today. Um, so I'll pass it over to Jeffrey. Um, we're going to take a couple of questions. Feel free to send us all the questions through the chat. And like I said, if you have any more questions, please feel free to email us after the webinar and we'll be happy to help. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for the excellent um, presentation. And um, yeah, I can see like actually over the time, so I was um, following for the first part when I was working with um, Ross and also start with MATLAB as well. And I can see like now we have actually a lot more examples. So just now, um, the question asked about where we get. So um, you can actually go to our GitHub, which is uh, I sent in the group chat. So over there, you can actually download um, those examples that um, Jose just showed you, like the phase detection uh, and also the example that use um, deep learning, the uh, pre-trained network, um, for example, like the age and also the expression, emotional expression, and also the gender. Yeah. So those are the quite typical uh, function that is required in at-home education, actually, or at-home competition. So in our challenge, we always need uh, the robots able to find people, to identify which person, and also to do some work with that person. For example, like you recognize that person, then you get the names and, and so on. So uh, this kind of interaction or this kind of functionality is very important for service robot, uh, but not just for robotics, actually. Um, a lot of applications that you can think of, like you can um, build an application uh, for the front desk, 
or even now for the COVID-19. So we have a lot of this kind of application that you want to recognize people, you want to have a system that's able to communicate with the people. So we have the speech recognition just now uh, and, and so on. So these are all the examples that as Juan Jose said, you can just download the code into MATLAB, run your ROS system, and everything just works automatically. So um, yeah, so just now there is a one question about um, where to get all this code. So you can you can get it from our GitHub repository, and another one which is um a little bit much much earlier. So got one participant actually asked, um, is that possible to generate the code and run on Raspberry Pi GPU? Okay, this one I I okay, yeah, didn't really answer. Question. Yeah, yeah, no, great question. So I think uh, the Raspberry Pi is, is, is an ARM-based processor, so it means that it sort of has uh, a process. We have a great support package for it, so Raspberry Pi. Um, I don't think it will quite take the job, well, the code generation and CPU acceleration. So if you're if you're looking into be anything with an N NVIDIA GPU, uh, which they have, you know, sort of the most extensive deep learning API, uh, separate standalone GPU boards like the Jetson, the Xavier, Jet, those things can target as well. But the Raspberry Pi, you can definitely generate deep learning algorithms for, and we have tons of examples for it. Mm -hmm. So in the chat, they say like, it sounds like the GPU support is for CUDA or OpenCL? Yeah, so actually, um, so th there are ways of implementing OpenCL as well. Um, so I think that those are, is not one of our native supports. So still in OpenCL, I think there's a couple of uh, community contributions that have shown how to use MATLAB to, to, to use OpenCL as well. But if you guys are interested in GPU programming, please just send an email to roboticsarena.com and we can start with that. We also have a video on the Robotics Arena uh, video series. Uh, so there's a video dedicated. So. Right. Thank you for the answer. So I hope that i uh, answer you regarding the GPU and stuff. I uh, put up on the screen, so those are the links that you can you can find all those information. So the again, I would say the presentation um, slides to the, I will uh, upload on our website. So you can go to our online classroom page and to find out where the this uh, materials and also uh, the video says and put up on our YouTube account. Then I will link it on our website. So you can uh, if you miss something or you want to look back or, or you want to even like refer this to your friends, colleagues, and. Uh, Right, so we have a new question. Okay, so um, I do not have any physical robot. Do you have any videos and tutorials that I can refer to to use um, virtual for, for the arms, right? If I'm not mistaken. Great, Simulation. yeah, great, great question. Um, so I'll try to find the link real quick. Uh, but yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, in fact, um, there's a couple of documentation examples where you, you can download our, 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 our virtual machine. So you can download a virtual machine, install it on your computer, and it will have a complete gazebo environment uh, with the turtle body. It's all completely uh, free, you know, integrated. So all you install it on your computer and then open up that gazebo world. And then you can interact through it from MATLAB or, or directly, you know, from any other place with, with its IP address. So an email to roboticsarena at mathworks.com and we'll forward you how to get started as well. Okay, so like uh, we have conducted our online classes for um, the online challenge that previously and that online class online classes previously that work totally um, without any physical robot. So which means we assume um, the site there, we also similarly we have um, the virtual box um, image that you can put in and with that you we already have models in and so on. So I um, I also can remind you that we have uh, a few classes that talk do the navigation for the turtle bot in um, the Gazebo environment. So maybe you want to um, uh, one of the class that talk about vision. So over there you can find uh, and buy the, the materials of the class and also the VN. You can add on uh, the MATLAB parts to help you to do uh, the highlight. All right. So yeah, I hope like this will uh, this image processing can be incorporated with robot swan <laughs> to uh, incorporate with um, image processing. Yeah, it's Maybe an you interesting want to question. The video, I right? think. Yeah. <laughs> But certainly you can you can deploy, let's say, uh, things that you can do, right? You can either identify different looking at all the other robots from its point of view, like similar to some RoboCop competition of looking at, at, at all of the robots at the same to sort of learn how to identify decisions on that. But yeah, that will help you too. So I have another question asking about, can I run ROS on Windows and Pro E uh, by my lab code, where my MATLAB code will be act as a separate, this one uh, first. Uh, if you're talking about ROS 1, which is the original ROS machine, to run ROS on Windows is by using a virtual machine, right? So you can refer to our class. Uh, basically, you just need to either do a doorboot 
but that thing you run the virtual machine on Windows and on top of that you run ROS. So you can refer to our online classes. Previously we have one class and how to run. And previously uh, we run the machine, the same network. So they are actually two different machines that can run within these two machines. So you can use MATLAB to control your ROS system. So maybe like Jose, you can add more. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah, great. That, that, that's actually pretty perfect. I think they also ask how about running in Windows? Um, so, so check into that. I think it's it's still very new, but uh, yeah, Rust to for the, when when you run MATLAB code, uh, sort of from an interact with with your with your robot by two different ways. You run your robot, and then you initialize and uh, receive commands from to Rust, the development computer together, which is and run it in in the computer running ROS. Um, so those are the sort of two options. Hopefully that answers the question. Yes. So anyone have uh, any question more specifically for MATLAB or you have during your application or maybe Jose, you can tell a little bit more like how to apply. I, I believe like some of them just um, enter this. Uh, just now you put up the link, so maybe you can test. So, so because I know that um, most of them are not RoboCup. So, so for those people that just want to hurry, like um, they haven't joined RoboCup, but they want to join, uh, particularly from this activities that you can give them in order for them to start uh, using MATLAB to do RoboCup development. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link in the chat. Uh, so if you if you go to that link, you're part of RoboCup yet. Uh, there's several competitions that we sponsor. If you're part of one of those, you can have the leagues. Just find, find the RoboCup page in there uh, and you can get the software. So there'll be a button called request. So if you're not participating in RoboCup or any competition we support, uh, I a lot of the times, uh, if you're part of a university, they will already have access to MATLAB uh, in the list that I just sent. Uh, send us an email, which competition you're participating in, and perhaps we can send you a license as well. Uh, MATLAB work with ROS too? Okay, um, yes. So uh, we just released uh, all of our ROS2 support. So basically all of the functionality we had for ROS1, Carrizo, um, if you're interested, we can post the link. It's called ROS Toolbox. That's where you'll find all of the ROS related functionality for both ROS1 and ROS2. Any more question from the audience? Do you have any more questions? Yes, you can ask like even um, to incorporate MATLAB, yeah, you can ask how you can start with your, your project and so on. So I uh, do our uh, lecture. Yes, please. Any more questions? Do you have any, anything that you want to ask? Also like anything that station, but something related to ROS uh, and MATLAB? More questions? I'm trying to check. Okay, I have one. Right. Um, okay, so maybe this is really not related. Auto desk and put it in the simulation lab. But um, okay, there are a few things that I don't I, I don't understand your question. It's like first, what kind of simulation and what kind of design and what you want to put in. So maybe that is what. Some Here, here's a, a bit on that topic. So um, if you're trying to sort, if you have CAD for yeah. a robot that you've created using motion of a manipulator that you've designed, you can definitely do that. You can import it, import that CAD into Simulink and, and create some graphics or, or an environment like we show you today, and add the torques and, and things and the joints and simulate that and, and get information. Go ahead and put up a link there on how you can import your Autodesk uh, things that you can request and let us know. Yeah, so uh, maybe do gazebo uh, simulation. So you need to know like how to create a model from CAD and how to access so you can build up your environment and also that and then well, later on in the navigation class. So with that, then you can have, refer to what um, so just you can uh, connect with. So, right. So I, I guess um, that is, uh, is the difference between MATLAB and Linux. Sure. Yes, works to sort of understand how MATLAB's ecosystem. That means that when you're, uh, you're going to be uh, working in what's called CAD in workspace or ROS. Uh, then you try to compile your whole dad works. So um, one, then you can definitely work in Linux in different programs. That's the way that works. Whereas in MATLAB, uh, you have the ROS node running, and then your advantages is if you're prototyping, there's MATLAB. Uh, so that's one of the advantages and the preference. So if you like done where, you know, it's a lot more simple, um, the story declaration, uh, other than the things you're trying to do. So there are things that might, you know, going and writing the low level Linux algorithm might be general. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really quick to do. Um, I think there's, okay, just there's a, a simple add on. There's when we export our map. You can install actually my There's one more question there. Access. Access. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Put our MATLAB code to standalone C. Does the gen process of running it in microcontrollers easy? Arduino first. Um, it we call a one click solution, one button that says deploy to hardware, the header files. We generate the, the, the them. We compile them and generate the back that code run for you. 
So it's a really cool standalone node generation is you have to move those files over to your raw necessary source files, all of the necessary, you know, uh, set of folders and like short as possible process. So then you'll just place them, recompile that. So hopefully that, that answers the question. I think there's a question can be answered. Uh, we don't have a specific support. Um, a, a lot of different micro with the Node MCU via program, and there are ways of interacting with it. Yep. So thanks, thanks, Pipli, for this enabled uh, microcontroller. The, we do support that uh, within the Arduino platform. So. Do you have um, a summary yes, of Yes, absolutely. Sure. I think uh, actually they're, they're a great resource page that Jeffrey has linked Ebotics and, and Ross and how to sort of put all of this together, our video series. So the video series to it right now, uh, that simple robotics task for getting behind walking robots or manipulator, I'll give you a link to that. Yeah, the latest. For example, um, if you look at uh, classroom materials, uh, actually um, set up. So maybe you can refer to the first um, uh, in the video in the explain like if you have met on the robots are running on ROS and the one you can you can do that. If we have a lot of very technical so closely and um, I hope like we can use this actually all the references that we have um, produced but, uh, and also uh, you in uh, my lab and also AI deep learning. So very useful for you and then yeah use of all the hub and also um, all the references that also uh, references well we'll say you have anything you i think it's great thank you very much for that we're here to help everybody that's participating in this view if you have any questions feel free to get in touch with the slides that we're going to share with you. um materials and presentation today the lecture and thanks for everyone to join this session we have more session like this uh and arrange more right <laughs> we can we can do more back to us like any particular uh, topic on any 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 kind that related to service robot uh mass to see if we can arrange more so if you uh us to um, lastly, before I move to the last, um, before I end, I'm talking about localization and also, yeah, probably. So please um, continue um, to reverse, um, sign up, right? So please, also please share this thing to all your friends and do them. It will be very motivate uh, us to actually talk our presenter, uh, our invited speaker, and also, yeah, so hopefully, like, it will really help you and um, so that we can interact more uh, with our, right? So see you, right? So you may leave <laughs> and I will close.